welcome to Mr. Otter Studio. Today I am going to show you how to draw and paint a poinsettia in watercolor. We will draw it in pencil and then we're going to paint it in using watercolors. This is a flower that reminds me of Christmas time and the petals are kind of crazy on a poinsettia, but if you stick with me, I will figure out a way to make it easier. And these are the favorite flower of my husband's grandma. Hilvia, this is for you. So these are the supplies that you need. You need watercolor paper. I'm using Mr. Otter Studios watercolor paper for sale on Amazon. Also, I'm using our brushes that come with the paper. I'm going to be using a flat three quarter inch and a number 10 round. You need watercolors, water, a paper towel, scratch piece of paper, and a pencil and eraser to sketch with. Also, optional, I always end up using this masking tape, especially since we're going to be painting in a square. You might need to use masking tape to tape it off. So before we draw it, I wanna put my tape on here just to figure out where the square is going to be. So I'm just kind of making a frame with my tape. You can use a ruler if you wanna make sure it's exact. Okay, once you get your square tape, let's, you can go ahead and start to draw the poinsettia. So let's get started. Grab your pencil. I'm going to draw darker just so you can see my lines, but make sure you're drawing really lightly. We're gonna start with the easiest part of this flower and that is the center. So we're not gonna put it smack center in my paper though, unfortunately, it is off to the side just a little bit. I'm just gonna draw a circle where that's gonna be. So basically what we have are all of these little circular things. So we're just gonna fill this with circles. I'll put one in the middle. So I'm just gonna put a circle in the middle and then all of these tiny circles around the edges. Then I might put three and then maybe four, five, six, and you can add some, you know, random ones around the sides. Some of them have like a little star shape on them that's going to be red and some of them are just going to be like a yellow color. There are these little yellow pod things that are coming out from the center. They're really small. There's about three to four of them. So actually five might work. We'll just do five. So I'm just adding five of these little leaf shapes around it. Let's start drawing these petals. The first one we're going to draw is this one that's coming down on this side. So it's kind of starting in the middle and then it's just coming over this shape, kind of pointing down, coming to a point and coming back in. The second one is coming straight up into the air right here with a really sharp point. The third one is actually just behind this one and we're gonna draw, just start right behind it right here. Start drawing your line up and then it curves to the left, curves up. And you have a little bit of a wave before it comes back down. The fourth petal is underneath this one and it starts just down from the point of this one right here. And we're gonna bring it over to the side, give it a nice point and then bring it up with a little bit of a ruffle right there back in and it just kind of disappears into the center. And then we have this humongous petal on this side. So it's really big, but it gets the fullest right here, has a little ruffle, comes to a point, comes all the way up here. This is a huge petal, and then back down. And then we're going to draw this petal that comes in here. So it's behind both of these. It starts about a little bit more than halfway up on this one. We have a line that comes up, goes to a point, comes down, flattens out, and then comes in to the center. And then we have a petal that is right on this side. So it's coming up from the center here, making a little bump, going to the edge and then coming back in. Then we have one that just hides behind these ones. One that is hiding back here. One that hides in here. And then we have two back here. So the first one is a smaller one pointing straight down. And then the second one actually comes behind it. So you can just see part of it comes to a point and then comes back it up. So definitely it's heavier on this right side. We can kind of balance that out maybe with putting a petal in here. This petal just seems, even though it really is so big, I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller just because it throws the symmetry of this whole thing off if it's so big. But you can keep it if you want. So I'm just making it just a little bit smaller and I'm just gonna bring this one to a point. I'm not gonna curve it around quite so much. So those are all the petals. Now we're gonna draw on the leaves. Now this can get confusing. So when we're painting it in, you've gotta find a way to make sure you're not painting in a leaf, but you're painting in a petal. So this is a leaf and I'm gonna write L on it. Okay, just so I know. And there's a leaf right behind it. And then one coming right here. And then there's a leaf that comes behind these two. Pretty big. Trust me, you'll need these. Then there's a leaf that comes right here. Leaf L. There is one that is on this side that's bigger than these petals. And there's one down in here. And I'm sure there's one right here too. Let's add one more right here. So we have our leaves, we have our petals. We are ready to start painting. If you are left-handed, put all of your watercolor stuff on the left side. If you're right-handed, put it on the right side. And let's get started. So we're gonna start with the very lightest colors, which is the inside of these, these yellow areas. 
So I have a lot of green in my yellow, so I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit. And this we can paint pretty saturated, so I'm just gonna dip right into the yellow. And then go ahead and paint in not just the circles, but these tiny little leaf shapes that we have here too. We might need to add a few more shapes in here. So I'm just adding a few more circles in here so that we have a little bit of something to hold on to here instead of stars floating out in outer space. All right, once we cover those up, we can start mixing up our light color for our petals. So I'm making a puddle. It's gonna be pretty big because we're gonna paint all of the petals, then we're gonna paint all of the leaves. And I'm gonna leave just a little bit of white space around these in case my yellow is not completely dry. I don't want it to run onto it. So to create a puddle, just drop some water into your tray or onto a plate, whatever you're using. Add a little bit of red, mix it around, and just check the color. There's not a ton of really light areas on this and I'm gonna put a little bit of orange in it just to make it a little bit brighter, but we need a lot of color in there. We don't want this to be pink, and that is the danger we might run into. But if we add a little bit of orange, hopefully it'll take that, that pinkness away and make it look like more of a red. So this is the color that I have, and I'm just gonna go ahead and cover all of my petals, trying not to cover the leaves and also avoiding this middle area because I don't want to have the yellow bleed out onto the red. The nice thing with mixing up this much color is it just makes it so much easier to paint. You don't need to stop and remix and then worry about the color changing, especially if you want it on a, like on a petal. We don't want too much variation in the colors. It's okay to leave areas that are white. Check and make sure you're painting petals and not leaves. Since my yellow's dry, I'm just filling in some of these areas in the center. All right, while that's drying, let's go ahead and mix up our green, and then we'll just make sure we stay around these edges. Really quick, I'm gonna just edit this in. I forgot to erase the L's. After you paint in the red petals, go ahead and erase the L's in your leaves if you drew them, so that you don't end up painting over them and they're permanent like I did. So next to the red, go ahead and mix up a puddle of green. You can use blue and yellow, or you can just use green. Right, so just take your green and be careful around the edges. Some of the red is still wet. So to avoid any problems, what you can do is just kind of paint a little white road. If it's dry, you can go right next to it. If it's wet, just, just leave a little bit of white. This will be nice because it's gonna help us make sure we're not painting in petals. Normally I would finish the petals and then work on the leaves, but you know what? We are gonna do what makes this easiest for us in the end. And in watercolors, we work in layers. So this is more of like a high key painting right now, but we're going to add a lot more color and make it look more dark and more vibrant as we go along. I probably should have taken the L's out of the leaves. <laughs> All right, let's work a little bit more on the petals. Some are darker, some are lighter, some are more vibrant. We just need to get some of those details in here. And then we'll take black in the very end and just add a bunch of different details and texture in this. So I'm just grabbing the same red that we had before, but I am going to add a little bit more red, a little bit more orange, just to make it more saturated. And this ended up being a lot darker and that's fine. I kind of want it to be a lot darker. And the first petal we're gonna paint with this darker color is this one right here. This one is behind. And then this one right here. The color underneath this needs to be dry or else you'll just lift up color when you try to do this. So if you're painting and you start lifting off color, you either have too much water on your brush or you need to let that layer dry. Like see how I kind of picked up some of that color. Let's go ahead and paint in this one. We're just trying to create some depth here. And also we're trying to separate some of these petals from each other. So most of them have like a shadow on them or something like that. So each of them are darker as we get towards the center. But like this one, as it moves out, gets a little bit lighter. So it has a shadow kind of underneath where these petals are over it. But then it gets lighter as it moves out. So I'm just blotting my brush off on my paper towel. And then I'm just coming along the edge. I don't want water on my brush when I do this, but I'm just trying to kind of feather it out. And also, while we're doing this, we can add some of the texture to this petal. So I just dipped in the red. I'm gonna come down and make the center line of the petal. And the texture comes out from that. So kind of coming in this direction. Right, so I'm just kind of adding a little bit of that. So I'm just making some lines coming out from the center to add a little bit of texture to this petal and then also add a little bit of depth to it. Let's come up to this one and do the same thing. So add the center line first and then this is much darker on the top. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in now. And then it just has a little bit of shading kind of coming in on this side. 
So I'll put darker shadows on this one in a minute. But right now we just want to get that shadow on there. Um, same thing with this one up here. Much darker on this side. Not as dark as the one behind it. And you can just add a few of these lines that come out from the center. This one I'm just going to use my brush that has a little bit on it and add some of those lines that are coming out. So we're just slowly building up, building up and building up until we put the very last texture on there. And then this one has a shadow along this side of its petal right here. And then it actually starts kind of down here and goes up. So I'm going to blot my brush off and then just bring some lines coming out. And these aren't really lines, they're actually like indents and texture on these petals. And let's go ahead and grab the darker color. I'm just going to paint with it. I'm just using it pretty saturated up on the top. And then let's work on this petal. So there's a little bit of shading because this petal is kind of overlapping it a little bit on this side. And then we just are going to go ahead and add some of these, this texture again on there. So this one's pretty exaggerated. So I don't really like how sharp those lines are. So I'm just blotting my brush off and I'm just going to kind of go. I want to make sure there's no paint on it. I don't want it to be darker. But I'm just going to kind of go along some of these edges and just soften it up instead of having it so bright and vibrant. Now let's work on this middle part with these tiny little petals. This one is darker on the top, so let's start here and we'll just make this one darker on the top and then just add a few little details in there. And this top one is darker on the right side and then we can just add a few little details and let's see this one, shadow on the bottom. So I'm kind of just shading half of it and then adding these details on the very top with each of these petals. All right, so now we're gonna even get darker on some of these areas. So I want to get darker on this petal. So I'm just really taking the same color over the top and adding some of these shadows. You can soften it up if you want. Let's see, we need another a darker shadow right here behind this one and probably under this one. I might just paint a little bit more shading on this petal right here. All right, now we might not be able to make this quite as bright as I would like it, but we can still darken it up just a little bit. And then we'll make the petals, the leaves not so Right. They should be darker than the petals. They shouldn't be the, the highlight or the spotlight of this. So I'm just going to grab some pure red. I don't maybe want to use this color for all of these. So I'm actually going to put some of these shadows in first before I make this darker. So let's just add some of these shadows in here. So on this petal, just this dark line. And then um, in here, and this one doesn't really have it, but there's a shadow underneath this petal on there. And then this one, we're just going to add another darker area in here. So I'm just going over those lines, just getting a little bit darker. As it dries, it gets lighter and it's, you sometimes just have to come back in a few times to add those lines back in. Some of your shadows will disappear. Some of your nice details will disappear. So we're kind of just coming in from the center and then just adding these lines out to the side and they should curve along with those petals. So think from this line, they're kind of bumping out. So we're curving those lines out with them. Same thing for these middle ones. We need to just add a few more layers to it. You can darken them up just a little bit. Okay, now let's work on some of these back petals. We don't wanna make them too much darker or else it might look a little strange, but I'm just going to add a little bit of green actually to the red to make it a little bit darker. This is kind of what it looks like. It's good to have some a tester paper. See, like that's not dark enough. That means we need more red or we need to add a little bit more green. So just grab your test paper and you should be able to see it on top. Like I can't really see it on some of these darker colors. So I might need to add more green and more red. It's more saturated. All right, so we've mixed up a darker red with a little bit of green in it and we're gonna come into these very, very back areas right here. I'm even gonna make this so much darker. It almost looks like it's black. And then we're just curving out from that center line along the petals. They shouldn't be one solid color. There's so much texture on poinsettias. That's kind of what gives them their characteristic look is how pointy and how textured their petals are. So we're just kind of drawing a center line and then we're just adding some texture to it. So like in here, this totally got lost. So we're just gonna put it in. And this one's tricky because it's lifting off the color underneath. So I'm just gonna make sure I don't have a lot of water on my brush when I do this one, because I don't want it to lift that up. I might just let it dry, actually. I'm gonna let it dry for a minute. I'm gonna take this darker color. I'm just gonna add some more detail in the middle. So you wanna add some darker areas in here. You can add it on the petals. Anywhere your shadows got erased. And again, I'm just waiting for that one. We can add some detail to this one that's all the way back here and even just darken up the petal. So just use that darker color, add some texture wherever you're, you've lost it, add some details if you need them. 
Also, you can add more shading to these. You don't have to keep it at this point. You could add some lines just indicating the separation of these petals. You can do it with shadows or you can do it, sometimes I just take my brush and lightly go along them. It definitely looks a little bit more illustrative, not as realistic, but if you're struggling with your petals running into each other, it's a great way to separate them. So I'm just gonna work on these leaves around it. So we wanna darken them up and we wanna make them not stand out so much. So let's just add a little bit more green to our petal. We don't wanna add any yellow at this point, but we want a nice foresty green. So I'm gonna add a little bit of red to it to just neutralize it and make it just a little bit darker. And then we can paint some of these leaves in with our darker color. Some of them still might be pretty light and that's okay. I think I'm gonna do a black background on this, so it's definitely gonna cover up some of these and if it's too dark, it'll, it'll look good. Actually, it'll look better the darker that it is. So the reason we're darkening these up is because they just stand out way too much with this bright flower on them. We could have painted them darker in the beginning and we actually could use the light areas to create the veins inside of them, but we're just gonna use dark colors because that's easier. But if you want to, you could totally do that. If you want to, you could paint this blue. It doesn't really matter to me. That's your painting. Okay, so we darkened some of those up just a little bit. And now what we're going to do, since this is still wet, we're gonna add some of the detail in these leaves. Since we're working on them right now, we might as well, and we have time because it looks like this is still drying. So we're gonna make an even darker green with a lot more blue and add a little bit of red to it. I don't want it to be like super bright. Grab your scratch piece of paper, make sure that it's the right green or the right color that you want. I want this to be super saturated. I don't want it to be like very translucent. And then I'm going to go ahead, since uh, I can't tell, that's not dry. You can look at it, if it's dry, it's not gonna be shiny. So I'm gonna add some of this darker green to this one, uh, maybe to this one. Make sure they're dry and then just, I'm just layering these. I'm trying to make sure the ones that overlap are just separated a little bit. So take your dark color and paint in some of those leaves. And then with that color, I'm gonna add just a little bit more green to it. We can add some of the, um, the veins and the lines inside of the um, leaves. You wanna be careful because you don't want this to be too, too much that it takes away from the flower, but it's basically the same exact technique as the petals. You just wanna be careful. We don't want the leaves to be the star of the show. So, so this is kind of where I wanna keep it. And now what I'm gonna do is add some black. So I'm gonna add black around it and then I'm gonna bring some black into it to really, really add some dimension and also some contrast. So it's going to make my flower look a lot lighter though. That's the only problem that can happen when you add black in the background is that it will make these colors appear not quite as bright. So add any last details in the leaves that you want in the petals and let's go ahead and mix up. We don't really need to mix it up. Let's just use the black. So I'm gonna make a petal of it though because I'm gonna bring it into my background and I don't wanna just keep drip, dipping into my paint or else I'll get too many areas of light and dark. So I'm gonna start up at the top. Just be careful painting the background. You, you don't wanna rest your arm on your painting. That happens to me quite often. You can leave a little white area if you're worried about colors that are wet running out into your background. Just leave a little white area. All right, once I paint in the background, I'm gonna come in and add some contrast and color in the middle of my flower because there aren't actually petals back here. It's actually just darkness and I need some depth. Now I told you when I start to do this, it's going to make the petals look a little bit lighter. So, ow, and be careful with your background like you just saw what I did, maybe but I just smudged that with my arm. All right, then you can just come bring that same color and just kind of bring it up onto some of the petals. We can get our darker red and re-add some of these shadows so that this doesn't look so light now with our dark background. And you might like it that way. So if you like it that way, you can just keep it, but if you want to add some darker colors, just mix up a black with some red. Sometimes it takes the background to help you figure out what needs to happen to your painting. At least for me, that's how it works sometimes. So I just have a little bit of a darker red and I'm just coming in anywhere I feel like my petals are not separated enough. I'm gonna add a shadow. I'm gonna look at the image and try to see like what is it that's separating these. So I'm just adding some of these darker veins onto these ones to kind of tie them in, but also, cause now again, they just look like they are a little bit washed out next to that dark background. So you can keep adding more details in there and keep painting. 
You just have to be careful. You can um, overwork your paper. Let it dry, take your tape off, sign it, give it to someone you love for Christmas, and have a wonderful, happy holiday season. <laughs> Thanks for joining me on Mr. Otter's Studio. I hope you have a wonderful day. Also, I would love to see your images. Post them to Instagram using hashtag Mr. Otter Studio Poinsettia or just Mr. Otter Studio and I'll see it. And have a wonderful day.